Recently, I stumbled on a web page that claimed to show the easiest way to make a clamp rack. The process involves making a series of cuts on a bandsaw to create notches that the clamps fit into. But I'm going to show you a conduit clamp rack build that is far easier to make that will give you more space to store those precious bar clamps. <laughs> We're going to make this project as simple and cost efficient as we can. I bought this Baltic birch square for about $4 and this 1x12x6 for $9. Because we'll be attaching the sides with glue and screws, it's really important we use solid wood and avoid end grain. I marked my first cut on my pine board at 22 inches. You really only need a handsaw and a drill to make the most basic rack. I cut my 10 foot conduit into 20 inch lengths. But why conduit and not just a large dowel? Because conduit is mass produced, the cost is incredibly cheap. This tube cost me about $11. It's strong and dirty clamps won't ding or leave glue behind on it. To get the most clamps that we can on this rack, I nested my tubing. There are a few obvious problems that come with doing this though. First of all, we have to worry about how close they are to each other vertically. We also have to worry about the thicknesses of the handles, making them difficult to pull out. So I measured the length of the handle and added a little extra space. These clamps need about a five inch vertical space between each clamp. For the horizontal space, I gave myself about an inch and a half. This left about a two inch diagonal drop at the ends of each of my clamps. Next, I traced each of the ends at the pivot point of each clamp. And then a second tube on both the last two nested racks. I put both of them close enough to the first tube so that my six inch clamps will fit on both of the last racks. Incidentally, the three clamps I use the most, the six, 12, and 18 inch clamps, will fit on any of the racks. I move the clamps and finish tracing my tubing. Now, you can get really calculated here with finding the exact size by measuring each circle, finding the radius, and using a compass. But using an awl and finding the approximate center worked fine. I used some carpet tape to connect both walls before hitting the drill press. I'm using a one and one fourth inch Forstner bit here. If you're lucky enough to own a one and three sixteenth inch Forstner bit, you'll get a snugger fit for your tubing. Then again, if you're using a drill, having a slightly larger Forstner bit will actually make it easier to connect the tubing. I do have a fix for the larger hole later on that I'll show you. If you noticed, I actually drilled three boards at the drill press. The reason was to show you how simple you can make the walls. With the diagonal line marked off, you can quickly cut walls and move on. but I challenge you to personalize your project. I use tape rolls, measuring sticks, really any shape I can find to add a personalized look to all my shop projects because it'll make you feel good using the things you make. Sometimes the best feeling I get when I go out to my shop is flicking the light switch and seeing the creative energy I put into my tools and organized tool holders. I'm using a bandsaw here to cut the curves out on the pine boards, but you can use a scroll saw to do the same thing. If your blade isn't long enough, do one part and then trace it onto the other board and finish it. I'm using an oscillating spindle sander, but you might be surprised by how clean you can make the curves on this with a wood file. And here's the final look. I'm going to add a little notch at the bottom of my board for an eighth inch steel bar to fit in, something I'll explain more a little bit later. I 
I hit the router to give it a slight round over. Again, you don't need a router to do this. A file will do this just as well, or you can leave it alone. A little sanding and it was ready to be glued. A couple of clamps is all you need for this glue up, but you can also add some brad nails. When dry, I decided to add a layer of polyurethane. This is my favorite finisher that I've used on all my wood walls and shop tool holders because it adds a thick layer with one coat. After that's dry, I really think adding screws should be a priority. Instead of using screws, I went with splines. I don't know, I kind of like the look of it from the other side. To connect the tubes to both walls, I went with epoxy. But let's stop. We really don't need a lot to hold these tubes in as the tubing will always have a downward force on it. All we really need is to make sure it's glued well underneath. Of course, you can wedge thin strips through the top, but I don't think it matters. At the same time, I also added the last strip of metal at the bottom. I've used a strip like this with my big clamp rack for years, and it is so handy to be able to add squeeze clamps to this, as you'll see here in a bit. If someone were to ask me what I like best about this, it would have to be the sound of putting clamps away. There is something very intoxicating about hearing that metal clank against metal. Oh, and in all, this 20 inch by 22 inch clamp holder can hold a total of 49 clamps. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below, come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob, and remember to keep making things.